everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this updates video this evening. I trust and hope that you guys are doing really fantastic and I also hope that you like that new channel intro so I'll be using that one as of today. So we're going to be looking at our active tropical cyclones out there as well as that area to watch off the African coast. And so here we are looking at the 7 day outlook from the NHC and there we have Lee or what is left of Lee making its way into parts of Atlantic Canada. On the satellite imagery here we can see it not uh, sustaining a whole lot of activity activity right now and we've got a lot of uh, cold air enveloping the system so it is dissipating it is approaching the end of its life but it is likely still bringing impacts to portions of the northeastern u.s particularly for maine and also going into parts of atlantic canada new brunswick nova scotia so conditions will gradually improve as we head through to the early part of the new week and as what is left of lee makes its way back out into open waters of the atlantic but as of now it is sustaining winds up to 70 miles per hour and moving up to the north at 16 miles per hour. Going on to Margo. So Margo is a weakening tropical storm lingering out there by itself. But uh, as we're going to be heading into the latter part of the new week, it could make its way into the vicinity of the Azores, potentially bringing some impacts there. Nothing too crazy as it is expected to become post-tropical by, uh, by that time. Now we've got our new tropical depression. So it is yet to become Niger, but that is anticipated maybe as we head into tonight or into tomorrow. So here we have it on these satellites imagery it is looking a lot better in terms of those uh, thunderstorms consolidating so it is trying to improve itself out there and gradual intensification is likely so this could become a hurricane maybe maxing out at a cat 2 and as it relates to the track let's go on to what NHC has here you can see that the cone remains well to the east of Bermuda so direct impacts in Bermuda are not anticipated the most from this could be uh, those rough seas that it would generate as a hurricane nearby so as it relates to marine activities, that could be an issue. But in terms of strong winds, heavy rainfall, that is all likely to remain offshore. So Bruin Nigel is likely to be a fish storm out there, meaning that it remains out to sea, not being a problem for anyone. And uh, let's go ahead and now talk about that new area. So there we have it, 30% chance of development. We can see that there is no X to show the location of that low pressure area because it has not yet formed. So as we head into the middle of the coming week, we're likely to see that next tropical wave emerging from the African coast, which we could see develop as it makes its way toward the west under the influence of the high pressure system which may reinforce itself out there and so as i've mentioned in this morning's update once that high pressure system reinforces uh then we would have a continuous westward track of the system which would uh allow for it to enter the caribbean and that could be both good and bad news if it is a weak system we're talking about it could bring some well-needed rainfall to eastern islands but if it is strong it would do more harm than good uh especially as a tropical storm that would induce a lot of heavy rainfall and uh, we know that flooding and mudslides, landslides, those are all possibilities when it comes on to these tropical cyclones out there. But the rainfall is well needed across the region right now. So in addition to this, we also want to watch off the southeastern coast for some subtropical development as a low pressure system is expected to potentially deepen off uh, the Floridian coast maybe becoming something who knows and in the Western Caribbean as well GFS has been pretty consistent about something and GFS also goes out much further than the rest of the other models so that could be a reason they're not really picking up on anything there but GFS has been consistent and there is really no guarantee but also as I've showed you guys in previous updates uh, the Climate Prediction Center in the most recent updates highlights the Western Caribbean for potential development low chance but nonetheless that is a bit of confirmation to say that hey we could see something but again no guarantee so we definitely have to pay attention to those areas but now let's actually go ahead and look at the satellite imagery so this afternoon we've got some thunderstorm activity popping up across some sections of northern islands sections of cuba going to jamaica hispaniola which includes uh haiti and the dominican republic also for puerto rico maybe a bit of thunderstorms are passing showers across sections of the leeward islands but as we head further south to the windward islands including barbados Trinidad, Tobago, and also over the ABC Islands, there isn't much happening, so it has been rather hot and dry. Again, we definitely need that increased rainfall activity, nothing too major, but we see that in the southwestern Caribbean, it is a contrast, as there is that blob of showers and thunderstorms likely impacting Nicaragua, maybe even Costa Rica, and we also see some development across Panama, so maybe some very heavy rainfall across some areas, and that could potentially be inducing some flooding, so I hope that everyone is doing okay, and if you're being impacted by flooding, 
it doesn't matter where you are once you're being impacted please do not take any unnecessary risks don't attempt to drive through flooded roadways or cross flooded bridges so aside from that area nothing crazy is happening across the region and of course i'm here to keep you guys posted so stay tuned for my next updates coming tomorrow morning and that is pretty much it for right now i hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions as usual please do leave them in the comments i'll respond once i get the chance to do so and as always remember to be with the wise